everyone. Welcome to this episode of The Digital Diplomat. I'm Tony Abad, and today we are going to be delving into the concept of conflict resolution in the digital space. The world is getting smaller, and our digital space as well is getting smaller. We're getting more connected. And as you know, the world is in a state of flux and crisis. And so it's important to consider this issue of conflict resolution, and maybe in a word, diplomacy. We are honored and fortunate to have with us a special guest and friend, a veteran coach and supporter of leadership development here in Asia, but also in the rest of the world. She is the managing partner of Turning Point Asia and a senior executive coach who has been working very hard on resolving conflict here in Asia. We have with us no other than Veronique Girma. Uh, bienvenue. Veronique, thank you for being with us. I wanted to ask you a little more about yourself. You know, what was your journey that took you here to Asia from Europe? And also, you know, this fascination with not just Asia, but the fact that our world is getting smaller and that the answer to the world's problems is not, uh, is not through violence and war, but actually by resolving through peaceful, uh, peaceful settlements of disputes, uh, conflict resolution. So what got you here? So first of all, thank you, Tony, for this uh, warm <laughs> introduction. I am also very honored to be here with you. Um, well, what brought me here? I'm, um, I'm French, actually. Uh, but I left France 25 years ago. I spent five years in Netherlands, Amsterdam. Hmm. And I came here in 2002 in Hong Kong, where I'm based since then. What brought me here actually is business and the really great desire to have a new experience of a new culture. That was really a strong desire I had. And so when I had this opportunity to come here, and that was a great joy for me because I really wanted to have a a longer experience of living in another country, but also another world. Because actually, even though the world becomes smaller, as you said, we still have some cultural differences. And here it's been uh, so far the opportunity to, uh, uh, to meet uh, and to face and to uh, learn to deal with those differences. You know, the, the fact that we are not world leaders or government diplomats or government officials ourselves doesn't detract from the fact that what you do, which is conflict resolution, is still very essential nowadays. And I wanted to pick your brains on this. What makes conflict resolution or, or diplomacy essential nowadays? Maybe not, not just for, for the executives and leaders that are your clients, but in general, here in Asia and the rest of the world. First of all, my experience is um, with executives in uh, MNCs, but diplomacy exists as well in, uh, in, you know, in, in, in big organizations, uh, really a lot. Why these skills becomes, and is, has been our, I mean, already for a while, but it's becoming more and more important. First thing that comes to my mind is actually, as you know, we cannot escape the high level of uncertainty we all live in, right? More and more for different reasons, economic reasons, but also for because of this pandemic. And it's, it's and, and of course, what's uh, happening in Europe with this war, the level of uncertainty, and I would say even anxiety is, has really increased. You would agree with me that leaders cannot escape it. We cannot say, oh, let's wait until the world becomes more certain, more, you know, that I can, take, I, I can be in control again. It will not happen. And we know that. So leaders, actually, there are these days I'm hearing a lot. I'm not doing only conflict resolution. It's a part of coaching, doing yes. a lot of leadership development as well, transitioning into new positions. And I'm hearing a lot. Well, I have no choice. I have to learn to be comfortable or less uncomfortable with uncertainty and ambiguity because it will never go away or, or, or it will evolve differently. And I have to. When there is uncertainty in the world, it may have been initiated by a world, you know, one of the world leaders on the other side of the globe. But certainly there's some effect even on local leaders and on local business. Have you, have you experienced that knowing we have this tension going on on the other side of the world, but it is affecting us here as well? It does. And especially because um, I, can, I can feel it and I can hear about it because I'm working a lot with uh, multinational companies. 
But I would say there is this, there is the pandemic, there is the evolution of our economy. We are, the interdependencies are really uh, much higher now. I've started to hear already a, a few, I would say maybe two years ago, but it's really become, it's becoming something really important. I'm hearing leaders saying, oh, we need to be agile. We need to be agile to tackle mm. this uncertainty, right? And that's, I really agree with this. Even though agility became a buzzword, I really agree that we need to develop some form of agilities in organizations. And in order to be agile, we need actually to be able to quickly pick the brain of more people than before when it comes to make a decision, because it's uncertain. We cannot have the answer on our, I mean, ourselves only. We need to ask more people. We need to engage divergent opinions into the decision process making. And that's where having to benefit from this richness of diversity of thoughts, of uh, point of views, it uh, can rise opportunities or it can bring some possible tensions and mm. conflict. And that's why, you know, be, um, being able to resolve conflict is really necessary in this uh, time of uncertainty more than ever. Trying to get consensus or, or, or gain points of view from, from divergent points of view, which is, I think, essential uh, indeed in trying to avoid conflict. Isn't the problem that it might slow down the process, you know, that Maybe decision making becomes slower because we're, you know, we want to consult and get these different points of view. What's what's your take on that? So first of all, I would say that uh, consensus is not uh, always uh, the aim of consulting people. I mean, in business, in business, most of the time. But at the end, there is a decision to be made. To be made. I'm, I agree with you. We cannot wait and, until everyone has agreed on the same thing. Uh, but that that's for me exactly what it is uh, about. Um, facilitating thinking mm. that's a that's a skill that goes with conflict resolution for me it's very very seldom that now they can make some decisions fully alone so what it's part of agility for me sorry it's part of agility to be fast and mm. to choose who to consult to be fast at collecting and to make their own judgment not alone mm. Could you share with us what you'd call a personal success story your being in the se this business corporate setting and being able to exercise that skill of resolving a conflict or exercising diplomacy? More or less successful, I have to say, very humbly. <laughs> you know? But the example I would bring, because it's, uh, it's dear to my heart, it's regarding uh, actually um, people I was coaching in an organization. I I'm thinking of a manager and a report, uh, a direct report to that manager. And both of them were having tensions. I wouldn't say that they had a huge conflict, like, uh, you know, loud voicing and <laughs> but it was uh, still tensions and it was really hindering their their work together it was not smooth anymore they were not trusting each other in way it was impacted the rest of the team impacting sorry the rest of the team uh, so actually they decided they they first of all they agreed to share the responsibility they said i don't see the solution now but i agree to try and to play my uh, role in it so you know that was the first thing what worked quite well is to work with each of them on helping them to know themselves better and to revisit the mental pictures they had on the other one, mm -hmm. on the other party, I would say. And once it was really explored for them, when it was really clear, oh yeah, I actually, I have this fear. They were able to get together and in a facilitated way, you know, they were able to express one to each other, those fears, those, so making themselves to some extent vulnerable. It's not easy, huh? it's not easy. The result was actually significantly better in terms of a co cooperation and uh, they told me that the trust they had built through the experience to this conflict was actually achieved quicker than if we had spent if they had spent one year trying to you know build it and so they were actually quite thankful that they went through this conflict so it's it's a beautiful example it's not always easy Hmm. But it's uh, working on mental representation was really efficient here. It speaks a lot about the importance of trust, I think, and transparency and the openness. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it will end up becoming a long-term investment because when you disregard or you sort of take shortcuts, eventually it will catch up on you. Exactly. But it takes, it takes a decision to hmm. start. That's great. Very good insight. Very helpful, uh, Veronique. Now, it's a shame we don't have that much time to spend with you. I, I'm sure we'll be able to chat with you again. I'd like you to leave with our audience perhaps one important tip or piece of advice when it comes to conflict resolution or diplomacy in the digital space. Thank you, Tony. Many things already 
are already there, you know, available for many books, many tutorials, many, and that work really well. Like, you know, finding a common interest, like, a, you know, taking a mediator, uh, being able to take and give, choosing your battles, all these kind of tips that are really good. The main skill to build would be the skill of uh, discerning wisdom, discerning the ability to grasp, you know, an environment, to grasp, to be able to understand from the other one perspective, assess it against our own uh, set of values and doing ethical choices, actually. But that goes to a human quality, human being quality, not only a leadership quality, right? So it's a bit too short here to talk about how to develop discernment and how to be more mature in our management and less uh, uh, to fear less, actually, not to know. So I would focus only on maybe one thing that I find super useful is learn to have quality conversations. Conversations, they can be like, okay, I ask you information, you give me information. It's like a transactional type of exchange. There can be also um, conversations where we try to make a point or we try to, we are very defensive or we are a bit aggressive, but we can go to another level of conversation that is really partnering. I know it's not easy when we are in a conflict, but if you have the two minds into this partnering to create or to co-create something that was not existing before the conversation, mm -hmm. a possible future. For this, of course, we, we need to go step by step. And there are maybe two skills I want to uh, focus on because those are easier maybe to uh, pinpoint and to start with. No, three, I would say. One is the outlook you take on the other one. Work on the outlook you have on the other one. Is it something that is totally negative? Is it something that nothing can come out of this? Uh, or is it, okay, I've not seen everything, I'm ready. So this is a choice, a decision, a mindset, an intention. A second one is learn to listen properly. Tons of, you know, <laughs> training some good listening, but to listen to a, at a stage where you don't listen while you're preparing your answer. You listen to listen, to connect. You listen to connect. Mm -hmm. And the third skill, and again, there are a lot of things to, to help into that direction, is the skill of questioning. Questioning in a way that doesn't put the other one in a in position that they have to feel defensive, mm -hmm. that they have to defend themselves, but in a position that is inviting to again co-create. Mm -hmm. Another question could be how, what could be, I don't know, the best outcomes possible if we resolve this conflict that would uh, mutually benefit us. So we, then you, you have to start uh, thinking together. And yes. that's where usually we start, you know, changing from conflict into construction. Because conflict, I really think, are not always negative. Of course, yes. if it goes too far, if it's lacks of respect. But if, if, we, if we know how to manage it, and that's why it's super important skill from leaders, it can result in something that is a learning, an opportunity to learn. We shouldn't see conflict as a negative thing, but actually as a learning process. I think so, unless I'm, I'm talking about a certain degree of conflict. When it goes to war, Well, <laughs> I wouldn't allow myself to say that these days. But that's why we want to be all the way here, avoiding going all the way here. In other words, if we had already began having our, converse, our quality conversations, listening well, questioning well, then it wouldn't have gotten all the way to this point where the only resort was war. Thank you so much, uh, Veronique. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Veronique Germain of Turning Point. You've shared some very helpful insights and I think in a short period of time has given me so much learning and insight. For my own purposes, I know that to be a good speaker, you also have to be a good listener. And I think this seems to be the essence of the quality conversation which will lead to conflict resolution. Thank Again, you. thank you very much. This has been Tony Abad on The Digital Diplomat. We hope to see you again next time. <laughs>